We have, as always, the best standing gaffer there is. Tim is back. He is a Leeds United and a Republic of Ireland legend, Mr Ian Hart. Yeah, it's flattering when big Italian teams are coming in and looking at a player like, like Jack. But the bread and butter is you've got to go out and do it week in, week out at Sunderland. The other players they bought in a bang average. I mean, they, some of them should be nowhere near Chelsea shirts. Are they going to go out and wear the short of pride and put the body on the line? It didn't look like, like it. Would you take Sam as island manager? Thanks for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. Sam's on his winter break. He's recovering. He'll be back fresh soon. Don't panic. He's not gone and got a job somewhere yet that we know of. It is a winter break. And so we have, as always, the best standing gaffer there is. Tim is back. Tim Sherwood, welcome back. How you doing, that? All good? Yes, it's nice to see you. It's been a little while. Yeah, as yeah. Been enjoying the football. You know, been away a few times. Not as many times as Sam does, but you know. <laughs> Getting there. Getting there, yes. Well, thank you so much for, for coming today. We really Pleasure. appreciate it. Um, would you like to... Oh, before we start, um, if you don't subscribe, please can you subscribe? Because we're only 120 subscribers off 25,000 on YouTube. So if you're not watch if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. If you're not watching on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, go on to YouTube after you've listened to the podcast and hit subscribe. Thank you. Very good. There we go. I got that in because I forget to ask, you know, Tim, and if you don't ask, then yeah. you can't just expect people to do it, can don't you? Get, you don't so, get Yes, exactly. So now I've asked, um, would you like to introduce our guest today? Yeah, I'd love to. I, I understand it's the second time round mm -hmm. for this guy. One of the best left foots the Premier League's ever seen. And he is a Leeds United and a Republic of Ireland legend, Mr. Ian Hart. Thanks Ian. for having me, guys. Thank you for coming back. Cheers. I think you are only our second or third returning guest so that must be a good sign. You, you Certainly. Must, good. Last time you were on with Sam, I think it was pretty much just about um, about a year ago now, Tim. Wow. So, yes, we have lots to talk, talk about. Talk about, of course, yeah. Lots to catch Hopefully up. different things. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> of course, of course. The world, the world of football is always changing. <laughs> uh, we're recording this on a Wednesday morning, as we always do. So last night was Champions League. Manchester mm -hmm. City were in action. Did you watch it? Yep. What did you think? Um, I felt that Copenhagen were um, a mid championship side. To be perfectly honest, championship. Yeah, I really, I know they they're there on merit. They they've qualified for that stage and they obviously beat Man United to to be able to achieve that. But bang average and not in anywhere near the level of of Man City. Uh, but who is? You know, it's very difficult to compete with them. I thought City could have changed gear at any time. And in the end, when Foden scores the third one, I think it's probably pretty much, it's a, it was a technical mismatch. You know, Man City was De Bruyne firing on all cylinders and you know, they never hurt him at all until Edison got bored and decided to give him a, an opportunity to score. And, and Matson, the striker, took it brilliantly, bent it round him. Um, and you thought, you know, maybe a one goal deficit, you know, won't be it, it won't be dead. Um, but certainly with two goals, you would have to say going to the Etihad, they've got absolutely zero chance. So, you know, not worth a bet, unfortunately. I was happy with the third goal, though, because the return leg is um, on a Wednesday night. Yeah. It is after Manchester United derby the week before and the week bef uh, and the game before we play Liverpool. So it's bang in the middle of United and Liverpool games for City. Yeah. So I think that third goal was really important. That was um, it was a, obviously a great ball, cut back from uh, De Bruyne and... Folding, gave to keep the eyes and obviously put it in the back of the net. But uh, nah, City's strength and depth of that squad, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's top quality. I think they're, they're probably going to go on and win everything again this year. I do. Even my heart just... I agree. I agree. Really? Seriously? I mean, they're favourites for the Champions League. And you never know. You've got to stay clear of Real Madrid, you suggest. And Bayern Munich. But, you know, I haven't watched Bayern Munich at the weekend. They're miles off it. You know, defensively they are. Obviously, Harry Kane's gone there and he's scoring bundles of goals, but you'd have to say City have to be favourites in in all competitions, what they're in. Uh, well, you no know, one wants to play Man City. You know, you're going to have to catch one on an off day. You're going to have to have the referee on your side. You're going you're gonna to have to need so much luck um, to get past them. On a one-off game, you think you, you would have pretty much a chance, but on over two legs, what it is at the moment, you know, certainly in the Champions League, you give no one a chance against them. I feel sick now you said that, Ian. Well, it's a nice problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. no, I just think that the, when it comes towards the end of the season, they, they, they can easily go on the long run. Yeah. Um, I think 
Pep is one of, if not the best managers, and I think they'll they'll go on to win the league. Hopefully, the Champions League. I think um, if they can go on and do that, it'd be pretty special. Yeah, definitely feel sick. The idea of, do, of yeah. doing it again, just oh, wow. Okay, we'll move on before I faint. <laughs> Um, so we know, obviously, from your from your last time you were on with us, that you are an agent now. Yeah. Um, how was January for you? Is that like a manic time of your year? No, normally it's um, it can be quite busy, uh, stressful. But this window, one of the players I look after, Jack Clark, there was a, a couple of bids that come in from Lazio. Uh, suddenly, they didn't feel like that they wanted to sell the player in the in the January window. So you know, the players just obviously. Got to focus on what he keep he's doing at the moment, which is fantastically well, scoring goals, obviously getting assists. But um, hopefully this summer, uh, we'll we'll probably see Jack moving um, where it may be. We don't know just yet, but he's in good place. Sunderland, it's a good footballing team. It's a young group, a uh, group of players um, with a with a new manager, and um, yeah, it's exciting to watch. I don't, I think it's going to be difficult to try and get into the playoffs, but we'll have to wait and see what they can do. How does, this is a silly question, but how does a young English player in a championship club catch the eye of Lazio? Well, I'm guessing you're looking at, probably since Stuart Bellingham went over to, to Germany, I think a lot of the German and Italian teams, French teams, are, are looking at the, the kind of English market at the moment to try and bring players across. So, um, you know, obviously Lazio, it's nice. When a club like that comes in and, and starts inquiring about a, a young player like Jack and um, obviously how well he's been doing on the pitch, so um, he just needs to keep that keep that up and, and hopefully be plenty more as well. I think it's difficult for a lot of them foreign teams to go and poach players from the Premier League. Um, so they look the next tier down and they probably look at the players who have stepped up to the Premier League from the Championship and they think, why don't we go and have a fish in, in that level and might be able to nick a player? I mean, the boy Wharton has gone to, to Palace 16, 17 million pounds um, from, from Blackburn. I mean, that's the probably top end level of where the Lazios would be on the, on their money. You know, they, if, he, if you're nicking a player out of out of the Premier League side now, they're going to straight away, he's 25, 50 million pounds, you know, so... Out of the purse strings for a lot of them um, continental uh, teams. He was linked, or, or the rumours in the paper, I mean, you're the one to tell us, with other clubs as well. Um, Wolves, Palace, Brentford, Burnley, lots of lots of clubs linked. Yeah. What's What do you think would be the preference for his sort of like, or, or any sort of young player's playing career, an opportunity to go and play for such a historical club like Lazio or to stay with an, with an English club, either in the Championship or kind of lower half of the Premier League? Yeah, I think it was last summer, uh, Burnley, they came in and obviously bid to Sunderland to try and take Jack. Sunderland didn't feel the valuation was, was high enough and uh, and they turned it down. So, yeah, I think the players, obviously being an ex-player like myself and, and Tim, you just got to go out and focus on, on what you're, you're getting paid to do. Obviously go out and perform for the team, uh, which Jack has done. He's got 14 goals this season, four assists. So, um, yeah, it's flattering when big Italian teams are coming in and, and looking at a player like like Jack but the bread and butter is you've got to go out and do it week in week out at Sunderland and, um, and hopefully continue to do he's that. He's still a young man isn't he yeah. and he, he needs to play he's play on a regular basis I mean he had the big move to Tottenham didn't work out in hindsight when you look at it now you look at the manager who was in charge at the time Jose Mourinho was he ever going to get a chance I would suggest that's probably a Tottenham signing rather than a manager signing um, and I, Tim, I, it was I, actually um, it was actually Maurizio that signed them. Oh, Pochettino. Pochettino oh, yeah, yeah. So he stayed on loan, didn't he, for a year? And he, then... Well, he he signed. Obviously, Maurizio signed them, and then Maurizio went within the first couple of months. Yeah. While the documentary was going on, I think there was certain right. things that were going on behind the scenes, and then Jose brought yeah. uh, brought obviously came into to Tottenham. He actually liked Jack. He yeah. obviously had many a meetings with Jack and. He kind of gave him his, his opportunity, played him one or two games within Europe. Mm. And then there was obviously um, Nuno come in and then it was um, yeah. Conte. Yeah. So it was, you know, for a young lad that hasn't proven himself, age 18, yeah. at that level, and there's a conveyor belt of different managers comes in, it's always difficult, yeah. Please excuse me, I just want to stop this episode quickly because Big Sam and I just want to say a huge thank you to you for supporting No Tippy Tappy Football, whether you are listening or watching or doing both. Sam and I absolutely 
absolutely love doing this podcast and we couldn't do it without you. So take a second, please, and subscribe or follow wherever you are watching or listening to us. We're also on Twitter, no to be Tappy Football, and we have our own YouTube channel. I know everybody says it, but it really would mean a lot to us and it means that we can keep getting bigger and better guests the more followers and the more subscribers we have. And then you can go and tell all your mates that you've done Big Sam a favour. So thank you for listening. You mentioned Tony Mowbray there. You were quite vocal after his departure from Sunderland. Um, what, how, looking now a bit further on, how do you think Michael Beale's doing? How's he settled in? Yeah, I think, obviously, results, performances have picked up. Um, I think Michael, I think he's a very, very good coach. I think he walks quite uh, he, he walked with, with Stephen Gerrard up at Rangers at Villa so um, yeah speak to a few of the players at Sunderland and said he's a very very good coach but I think all the players like Tony he was like a father figure for them and um, obviously he's moved on he's got a job now at, at Birmingham which Sunderland is due to play on Saturday so really it, yes, so it should be uh, mm. quite an exciting game yeah oh, do you know what I really cannot keep up with the championship managerial roundabout at the minute I miss the fact that Darren Moore got sacked off Huddersfield. And then I read that he was manager of Port Vale and I thought, when did that happen? And then Tony Mowbray, John used it just seems to be mm. a right merry-go-round of managers in the championship just now. Well, that's why they're always playing against their old teams. I mean, John Eustace, yeah. <laughs> he, went, he went to play Birmingham, which is his old team with Blackburn on his first game last night. So um, I, I look at the championship quite a lot now because I'm working with, with Sky. I think there's, four teams who are outstanding in it. Normally the teams will come down from the Premier League and the rest of them are pretty average. Um, so it's wide open for a place in the playoffs. Um, but I think automatic spots, obviously we've seen like Ipswich tallying off, you know, they had a great start, didn't they? But it's, all, it's going to be the same old faces, you know, in automatic, you would suggest probably Leeds, you know, with at home, with the fan base, what they have. I mean, Hart, you know, more than, all of us, but I think when they get a momentum with that, when them support behind you, I think it'll be hard to stop. I think Leicester are out of sight. Um, and, you know, is Southampton going to be able to sort of hang on in there? I'd probably just go for Leeds at the moment, just on the basis of that 12th man, which is that home What support. are you looking at? I think Southampton were 26 games unbeaten until yeah. last night and they got beat 3 0. So it's. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be twists and turns be- between now and the end of the season. I think three teams, Premier League squads, strength and depth, they should be the three that, that automatically go up. So yeah. um, we shall wait and see. I feel like as an, like, you know, I've got no team in the championship. I feel like I'm kind of rooting for somebody, you know, not one of the three that didn't come mm. down. I just feel like it would be, you know, I really like feel like, every, you know, if you're not a Leeds, Southampton or Leicester fan, you're probably rooting for Ipswich to... To turn well, it around. Nice. Kieran McKenna's done an incredible job there uh, to take them from League One up into the, the Championship and to go on the run that they have done. Although they've had a few disappointing results uh, recently, they've brought in a, a key player, I think, in Kiefer Moore, that can mm-hmm. hopefully get the get the goals for them. And um, no, it's been it's it's been a joy to watch them. You know, they've been playing on the front foot, getting in people's faces, and um, yeah, it's been it's been good. Great win for Leeds last night as well. Yeah. Great win. Yeah. Have you, have you been impressed with them this season? Yeah. It's a it's a Premier League squad. You know, the top end of the pitch. Obviously, with uh, Somerville, you have Gennotto now starting to, to get back into the squad mm-hmm. and, and scoring goals. Um, Daniel Fark, good experience as well. So, a team like Leeds United with the fan base as well, with the momentum that they have at the moment, you would like to think they're in with a good chance of getting promoted back to the Premier League. Is he... Nonto, was he? Did he try and go on strike at the start of the season? Is that well? I think that was what was kind of portrayed within the the press or the media um, that he was trying to get an angle of getting out of the football club. But I also hear that Leeds are looking at trying to tie him down to a, a longer term deal. So yeah, it's a it's a massive club, Leeds United. Mm. The fan base they're so passionate, and um, yeah. I know it'd be it'd be amazing if they can get back to the Premier League, but I think the gap between the Championship and the Premier League now the gap is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it's a different sport. I mean, players like Nonto and Somerville they want to play in the Premier League, so he probably felt another another year out of the Premier League was not going to be what he wants. Um, but I think he's seen that you know there's a very good chance they're going to get promoted. I'm not sure he goes to a bigger club than Leeds if they go to the Premier League. Um, so he's probably 
seen sense and uh, going to give it his best till the end of the season, get them promoted, help them get promoted. Um, and then he's probably at the biggest club he's ever going to be at. Where do you stand on that as a as a manager and as an agent? If mm. a player wants to leave because they feel like they are Premier League quality or they're not getting on it's something at the club, to just kind of down tools, is that would you advise a player to do that, or or how do, how would you feel about it as a manager? Well, you would never advise a player to, to kind of down tools. You know what I mean? Because when they signed on the dotted line, see, it's a, it's a contract and. Um, was lots of players have moved on. Uh, Sinistera has gone to Bournemouth. You've mm. got uh, Tyler Adams. There was lots of players that were signed under the last um, owner, Andrea and Victor, that had clauses and contracts that pretty much left for freeze, um, which is probably bad kind of man management, letting them go when you buy it. I think they signed Rodrigo for 27 million record signing. Mm. I think he then went for about a mil and a half, two million quid. So, um, yeah, you would never advise any players, you know what I mean, to, to down tools. Um, but, yeah, it's everyone wants to play in the, the best league in the world, and I think that's the Premier League. I think it's key. You just got to get the best out of them. If they're disgruntled at that time, just put your arm around them, get the best out of them for that short period, or and hopefully they start feeling a little bit more love for the club and and the environment and want to sign on the dotted line for a longer period. But them three clubs, you're looking at Leeds, Leicester, and Southampton. As a manager, if you're out of work, manager, if they come and ring you, you you're pretty much going there for nothing to do that job. You say I'll do that job because you know if you get a promotion. All of a sudden, your stock rises, and there's a pretty good chance. I mean, less you just got to throw eleven players on the pitch, let them play however they want, because they have got a Premier League squad, and plus, plus, plus. I mean, Jamie Vardy can't even get a game; he scored last night. But I mean, got so many players who are, who are just too good for for the level, and that's why it's it's a shame about the league. I mean, it's it's, it's okay with the top four or five, he said, but then it's it's um, it's average. Is it vital that the three teams that came down go bounce straight back up? I mean, how important do you think it is that they don't linger in the championship? Yeah, well, financially it is. I mean, Ian, to tell you, with, with players, most players, it depends on what club you go to, most players are, will have a reduction in their money when they get relegated. Um, but it's still hard for that club to survive and the parachute monies don't last for long. You know, you need to get promoted straight away, really. Otherwise, it's, it's a fire sale pretty much a, a, a lot of the clubs. Um, I feel sorry for Southampton. I mean, they sold two of their best players at the, at the start of the season and you thought, everyone thought maybe they won't have enough, but they still have enough because they, they're a premiership. When you're a premiership team, you need the squad, you need the quality and depth and that's certainly what them top three teams have got in the, in the championship. If you look at the teams that went up last season, you mentioned Burnley there, but I, I mean, I think we've got to take a minute to talk about Luton Town. I mean, they're, they're going through a you know really great patch at the minute. Yeah. I'm a little bit nervous as a Manchester City fan, honestly, to go there in the FA Cup midweek in that um, for that game. If they stay up, should Rob Edwards be very much in consideration for manager of the season? Rob has done a remarkable job. Everyone probably said Luton are odds-on favourites are getting relegated, probably not going to get enough points, but... It's a difficult place to go. It's on top of the pitch. It's tight. It's not the best of kind of facilities. Mm. So for players that are not used to that, probably like Man City going there and it's going to be cramped. It's quite hostile as well. So it's, um, yeah. but yeah, I think the players that have, they've recruited as well have been Barkley. Ross Barkley has been incredible since he's gone in. Um, yeah. And the, and the, the hunger, the desire to go mm. out and put the bodies on the line. It's been, um, it's been a brilliant job that Rob has done so far. I think he's been flexible the way they've played. He's he's not worried about like, it's the Premier League now. We might have to start being a little bit more sophisticated how we play. Just playing to the strengths of of the group what he's got, and I think they've appreciated that. And obviously the confidence comes when they gain some results. They've got some experience there. He took Townsend in there as well. He's quite right. Ross Barkley's been outstanding for me. He's ahead of Calvin Phillips and and Jordan Henderson for the England squad. He should be. He's got a lot of experience playing international football as well. Will he get recognised? Probably not because it's at Luton, um, which shouldn't make a difference. But unfortunately, it probably will. Um, they just got to continue doing what they're doing. And Rob's done an unbelievable job. And I was one of them uh, pundits who, who, who backed them to get relegated. I still do. I still think they will struggle. But I think to even be in a shout of staying up, is 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 incredible job he's done. And whatever happens from here on in, 
he will get he get a lot of plaudits for for the way he's conducted himself, especially in the hard times with Lockyer as well. You know, it was, it was devastating for the boy. Um, hopefully, he gets back his career back on. But the, the most important thing is that he's healthy, and um, and they're going to fight right to the death. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, I would be nervous taking any team to to Luton. You just don't know what we know what you're going to get, and what you're going to get is a very competitive game of football. And and if things don't go your well with the referees and and a little bit of luck, you could end up coming away with nothing and out of the cup. Be disastrous for you. <laughs> you I feel like you look at me like you're trying to wish that is going to happen, Tim. Like you're trying to manifest it. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're that good. I think they could, but it was a tough game. Wasn't it? Mm. You know, when you went there in the league, yeah, yeah. it was very, and they were competitive against Liverpool and Arsenal and Chelsea. That I mean, he, he makes them believe, uh, and that's all you can do. You know, man for man, there shouldn't be anyone in the Premier League. Um, but it's not about that. It's about the collective and the group together, and and how they can galvanise themselves with the manager. And and they've done fantastic. Did you play with him? I was actually at Wolves. I was due to sign at Wolves when Mick McCarthy was the manager. I went on a pre-season trip up to Scotland. Uh, but unfortunately, Mick at that time, he, he only offered me a, a three-month deal, which I, I torn down. And um, But yeah, Rob, top, top guy and delighted that he's doing so well. We had Mick McCarthy on the podcast as well. If he comes yeah. back, I'll ask him why. Yeah. I'll why just him. three months? I know. I wasn't happy because not only that, I love Mick to bits. He, he was the one that gave me the opportunity to kind of get into the island set up. When I wasn't playing enough football at Leeds United, I was playing more for Ireland than I was for Leeds. And um, I have a hell of a lot of respect for Mick, yeah. Right, let's go into Premier League. Um, so you, I hear you went viral this week. Do you know about this? Yeah. You were talking about Chelsea's eight-year contract strategy. Um, you're not a fan of Chelsea's eight-year contract strategy, um, oh, apparently. I know, I know why they do it for the financial fair play, to spread the money's the payments over numerous years helps them. Um, but... No, I'm not. I'm not in favour of that. I just think players become too comfortable on big money. Um, you're giving them too much too early. Um, and if if they foul and they don't play, you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They can just sit there on their big contracts in London, you know, in Harvey Nichols and Harrods and wherever they their wives choose to shop. Fantastic environment and on eight year deals. I just think the hunger, not everyone, but I think the hunger on a lot of them has to be taken away. What do you, what's your perspective as in, from, with your agent hat on? Um, I mean, I guess if you, one of your players got offered an eight-year contract, you probably snap their hand off. I think it's a bit of security for the player, isn't it? But um, obviously, Cole Palmer, he's, he's left Man City, probably not getting enough game time, gone to Chelsea, he's probably been, been Chelsea's best player. Yeah. So was it the right move for him? Looking at it now... He's playing week in, week out. He's standing out. Although Chelsea probably should be higher up the table with the squad they have. But um, yeah, I think every every player is different. Um, obviously, it depends on what club you're going to go to as well. And um, for him, he's gone to, to Chelsea and, and mm. he's hit the ground running. When he when we when I heard that he was going to Chelsea, obviously watched him in the youth teams, watched him tr breaking through into the first team squad, playing a few games. I was surprised. I did think it was a strange move at the time because I remember thinking, "Oh, he's not going to play every. He's not going to start every game for Chelsea." And obviously, couldn't be more wrong. Yeah. Is the fact that Cole Palmer is probably Chelsea's best player is that a sign? Is does that reflect more on Cole Palmer or more on Chelsea at the minute? Well, he's a good talent and I'm sure Pep wouldn't want to lose him, um, but he wanted to play game time. Credit to the boy for wanting to go to a team where he feels he's going to play every week. When he first went to Chelsea, you see this influx of new players. We're a little bit unknown. We don't know how good they're going to be. You think, was well, he going to be, end up sitting on the bench there as well? But absolutely not. I mean, he's the first name on Maurizio's team sheet um, because the other players they brought in are bang average. I mean, so poor. I mean, they, some of them should be nowhere near Chelsea shirts. I mean, and I, probably Chelsea, I, and we keep barking on about Chelsea of old, but that's the only thing we know growing up and seeing them, you know, with Abramovich and, and their teams and the leadership, what they had, and, you know, the Terriers, the Lampards, the Drogbas, you know, the Pedder Czechs. I mean, it's amazing amount of players. Um, now, it's just a shadow of that. 
But I just think we've just got to accept it. It's hard to, but we have to accept that we're looking at a different Chelsea now. It's a new generation. And you need more Cole Palmers. You know, there's a lot of other Chelsea players who, who I say, you know, you need to get rid of them on eight-year contracts. Good luck with that. I mean, it's very yeah. difficult to get rid of them on big money on eight-year deals. Who's not performing? What's your names? Who's well, I could, I could go, um, how long we got? As long as you want. I mean, just, <laughs> I mean, there's so many of them. I mean, it's just, it, it, it is difficult for for players to, to settle in the Premier League. It's the most difficult league in the world and we say it all the time and it, it is correct. But I just look at, just run around and have a, make a tackle and show some desire or, or, or show something, you know. And, and I don't see that with so many of, of Chelsea's recruits. I mean, Mudrich is the outstanding one. I mean, Arsenal must be thanking their lucky stars, but he decided to go to Chelsea other than them. Now, on the flip side, you think, well, maybe Mikel might have made him the player. What he obviously got, he's got ability, this kid, you know, but mm. he's just not doing it. And he's not probably thinking, is he, I, from the outside, if I was a Chelsea fan, I'm thinking, well, you might not play well, but show like you're giving everything and, yeah, yeah. you know, leave it on the pitch. You know, is it, I don't know the boy. So you know, he's not alone. Uh, I just think there's loads of them. And you look at him and you think, well, is the lack of desire because there's an eight-year contract there and they're very comfortable mm -hmm. and they're probably picking up their phones to their agents and saying, get me away at the end of the season. I'm not getting enough game time. But they do anything about it. Are they doing enough to show to the manager that they want to be Chelsea players and they want to play for that great shirt? I'm not convinced they are. I really, mm -hmm. really aren't. I think as you're right, as, as fans, if you if you see your player out going out there and giving it everything, mm. you know, you, even when the results are not going your way, you're you know you're mm. all right because you you see your players yeah. giving it everything. Yeah. Um, we had Jody Morris on last week who was talking about Conor Gallagher. Yeah. Um, obviously a, a a a Chelsea boy, a Chelsea fan, his family is Chelsea fans come through the ranks at, at at Chelsea as well. But he's been linked with 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 a move away, which obviously is rattled a lot of the the Chelsea fans as well. So it just feels like there's just a lot of strange things going on there at the minute. Yeah, to be honest, he, he scored two good goals the other night against uh, Palace. I think he's an exceptional player. I think, you know, he covers the pitch. I think he ran 13K yeah. the other night in the game. Wow. So, um, yeah, I think Chelsea be foolish to, to let a player like him go. But yeah, there's certain two midfielders in particular cost over a, Hundred million. Enzo so Casado. Yeah. yeah. So it's massive amounts of money. Yeah. Casado is kind of a patch of the player he was at Brighton. Yeah. Um what's the problem? I don't know, but you know, it comes down to obviously the training. You know what I mean? If you're not walking hard enough and training, you're not going to take it into a game mm. situation. So it's you know, it's difficult for, for yeah. Maurizio. I think he probably wants to nail a few people, but yeah. Nowadays, the, the fragile, the players, that you have to be so careful of what you do. Yeah. Because you Con lose the dressing room, you're dead. That's it. But the Conor Gallagher one is exactly like the Cole Palmer one. I mean, there's only one reason why Cole Palmer left, so the financial fair play, because he's zero, because he's come through the academy, same as Conor Gallagher will be. Mm -hmm. Helps them. They have to straighten their books up, Chelsea. You know, the influx of players have cost them a lot of money, even though they spread it over enormous years on the contracts. Mm -hmm. And who's going to be available? Who wants to buy them players on eight-year deals? I'm not sure what Connor's deal is at the moment, but he'd be attractive for a Premier League side. Now, I think his numbers should be better. I think he tries the best. Well, exactly what we talked about. He runs around. He, the fans love him. He looks like he plays for the shirt. He wants to play in that blue shirt. Um, but he scores two goals the other night. They were his first two goals of the season. That ain't good enough. Yeah. Needs more for a number eight. Needs, the return needs to be better. But I think it will come. I think you need more of him and more Cole Palmer's. That's what you need. You need the character first and then the ability. I like I said it numerous times on the old take. I would take a, the desire and determination over ability all day. And if you can marry the two up, you've got serious players on your hand. Oh, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Um, how good can Cole Palmer be, do you, do you think? Obviously, it's, it's just sort of six, seven months into playing consistently mm. in the Premier League. So, in, yeah. in a few years, how good could he be? Well, it's, it's finding him a position. I mean, what, what, what is it? He's loose and he's loose off the left or right. He can play anywhere. But you need to be a top draw player and affecting the game to be afforded that privilege to just float and play anywhere. I think he wants to work hard. What people don't see is when people say we don't work hard, but it, what normally people talk about is out of position. 
you know, when the opposition have got the ball. But I think he works really hard when his teammates, say if Hartley had the ball as a left back, he would find Cole Palmer all the time because he works hard to try and make an and angle for him to pockets. Give it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's, that, that for me is working out of position. Yeah. That's working hard. And I think he, he's quality at that. I think he's an international footballer. I think he, he's difficult at the moment because he's in that position where there's so many of them, a lot of traffic in front of him. Um, it's probably too early for him this year. Um, but I think he continues doing what he's doing. He's with the correct manager and, and a great football club. I think he'd be an international player of the future, that's for sure. Yeah, England seem really blessed in that area yeah. right Shame now. Shame for him. Yeah. You know, you, if, you, if you're a young player coming through now and you, you're English, you want to be a centre-up. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, because yeah. that's where it's, it's the weakest spot. It just got me thinking about, about the Euros then and and and... And who England are going to select? Because obviously I watch Phil Foden every single week and he's absolutely phenomenal yeah. and I would have him in, in a starting 11. But they're so England are so talented in that area at the minute. Would Phil Foden get in your starting 11 at the oh, first game of the Euros? 100%. I think he all day long. Good, yeah. good, good, good. good. It's Gareth's worst nightmare. You know, the, the game, two games, when he scored the double, he's, wherever it was, he was his worst nightmare. The interview after when he's winning man of the match and I think it was Brentford. And then he's, he's come out and said, I want to play central. I mean, Gareth must have thought, oh no. I mean, I mean, you have to build a team around this kid. He's so good and he wants to play central. Let him play where he wants. For me, we need one pivot. We need Declan Rice. We need Belling on one side and we need Foden on the other side. Grealish out on the high left. Saka a high right. Harry Kane down the middle. <clears throat> Try and beat that side. But we won't because he'll want to play two pivots. He'll want to play Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips or Declan or, or uh, Henderson. Why? <clears throat> because that's the way Gareth wants to play. I don't think he's going to change now. He's got, what's he got? A couple of games, friendlies before the Euros. I don't mean a chair. It's, he, he might feel like it's a little bit gung ho, but I think you, I think play to your strengths rather than cover up your weaknesses. You mentioned Calvin Phillips <clears throat> there. Obviously, he's gone out on loan to West Ham. It hasn't yeah. been the best start for him. What have you made of that move to West Ham for him? Well, I think West Ham is a, it's a big club. Obviously, results. Have been good. Um, yeah, of course, it, it looks like it's going to take Calvin probably around about eight, ten games to, to get up to speed because he hasn't played week in, week out uh, at City. It's, it's always difficult. Um, the move from Leeds to City probably thought he was going to get in ahead of uh, Rodri, uh, De Bruyne, Foden, you know, the, the strength and depth, even like uh, Stones and uh, Rico Lewis were obviously playing ahead of Calvin. So to get out and play some games. But he finds himself on the bench at the moment at West Ham. So uh, the results haven't been great. Obviously, with the Euros coming up, he needs to be playing games to, to, to get picked by Gareth. So. If you had one player in the Premier League now to represent, who would it be? Oh, good question. Me? Yeah. You put me on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I would help you out and just say longevity because it's all about making money. You're not doing it for... You'd love it. Yeah. But, you know... So I'll tell you what, I, one. I love left backs. Although I, yeah. I look after Jack, I love Jack the bits. Um, but on doggy, left yeah. back at, at Player, Tottenham, young, young, hungry. Yeah. He's only going, going to go from strength to strength. I agree. Yeah. He had the loan, yeah. didn't he? He had the loan in Italy. Yeah. Come back. He's a cracking player, isn't he? Yeah. I hope that's a good answer. No, is that it? is a very I'll, good answer. See, I'll, yeah. I'll have half of that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> as soon as you say left back, it sends shivers down my spine. It's City. We haven't had left back in years. I know. It's like, you don't yeah. need one. <laughs> yeah, you, well, yeah, you're right. We just make players into left backs. <laughs> um, go, touching on Spurs there, um, we haven't spoke to you in a little while since obviously Ange yeah. has come along, got more settled in. Mm. You mentioned you, doggy, there. Are you, how, 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 what, what are you thinking? What's your oh, well, Spurs how thoughts? You, how can you not be happy with Tottenham at the moment? I mean, the crowd love what they're watching. Um, he plays on the front foot from minute one till the last minute of the game. Um, he said he promised he would do this. Fans, he was like, "Well, where's the, you know, where's the credentials? He's only been in Japan, or he's only been in Australia, or Celtic. You know, the competition. You're not going to be able to do that. He absolutely is. I mean, he's doing, he's doing it his way, and and the fans love it, and the players must love playing for him." Um, even the defensive players who were left on their own, the two centre backs, one have to defend on their own. But you got Van der Ven, who's quicker than Grease Lightning. You know, you got Romero, who's prepared to go high and kick people. Fantastic! I love watching them, and um, long may it continue. Hopefully, they can finish in the top four because that would be a great success for Tottenham. 
Have you enjoyed Tottenham this season? Oh, yeah. well, my son is 12 years old and he loves Tottenham. Really? So pretty much when they're on, we have to watch it. And to be honest, they're a bit of fresh air watching yeah. them this year, haven't they? Playing on the front foot. Obviously, movement up front. McCarlison's now yeah. starting to get goals, which is which is brilliant to see. Uh, Kulisevsky on the wing, son. So it's mm. um, yeah, Tottenham. They've I got think some it's firepower. It. Considering yeah. they lost Harry Kane in the summer, imagine if Harry Kane was at Tottenham. They're, they're Harry Kane away from winning the league. I said it here before. <laughs> they're Harry Kane Stop away from team. winning the league. You imagine Stop Harry Kane it. in that. Side. Well, it is. I, I talk to my son. I say, imagine Harry Kane yeah. in that team with, with Ange. I do honestly. Yeah. Do you regret it at all? Leaving. He's, I don't get, what's he got? Twenty-five goals. Yeah. Nah. But that, I don't but think. Means, I think he was done. I think he was done. He he he, he outstayed his welcome. Uh, sorry, they always wanted him there, obviously. But I would say he was time to go, and uh, and he's not disappointed with a move he's made. He really isn't, and you know, it's nothing lost yet. You know, they're five points adrift, Leverkusen, but it's going to be very difficult because they look good. Um, but it's still all up. He's in the Champions League. He might pick up a trophy. Even Madison, Madison. Oh, outstanding. Van der Ven, Madison, yeah. brilliant signings. So. Even Pesuma, who everyone thought, oh, what's he yeah. doing? Nothing. You know, at Brighton, he was a great player. All of a sudden, he came to Tottenham, done nothing. When Andrew's got in there, it's just let him play. Let him play. Just plays to his strength. Side in the midfield, um, Benton Court. I would love to play for him. I really would. On the, on the front foot all the time. Want to attack. Uh, play, play cr- progressive football. Fans are loving it. It's what they demand at Tottenham. I know it's, it's talked about a lot, but it really does matter. It doesn't matter if you win every week. Uh, with Jose, I think it was around um, December time, they were top of the league. They were suffering it. You know, as soon as the points started drifting away and losing games, all of a sudden they were up in arms because of the style and what they're watching. But it would never have that criticism, Poster Cogler. Never. I thought they were disappointed when they played City in the Cup a few weeks ago. Um, we won 1-0. Mm. And um, I don't know if it's more, it was, I would say it was more credit to City in the way that they lined up, but there wasn't as much. I didn't see from Tottenham what I'd seen all season. Do you think, I think it was a little bit subconsciously scared. You know, if you it's like a boxer going in the ring and you know someone can knock you out. And if you don't, if you drop your gloves, you're going to get knocked out. And I think subconsciously not that the manager would be breeding it into him but I think as players you think well should I go or oh, I've got to worry about this one or Docker it's or, like a game of chess isn't yeah. it you make that little move too early bang yeah. City can exploit it and obviously punish you that's what they, that's what yeah. your mob do to people they play with their minds that's the problem yeah. they've earned that right mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um I'll turn to Ian for a minute while we have a chat about Football League again, Tim, just for one second. I love the Football League. <laughs> um, talk to you about Reading. Obviously, yeah. you were a former Reading player. It must be really sad for you to see what's going on there at the minute. Yeah, very sad. But, you know, results, you know, they've obviously had to sell a lot of players in, in the January window. They've let players go. Uh, Tom McIntyre went to Portsmouth, I think, for about 75 grand. One of the other centre halves went to to Luton, so yeah, obviously the results they picked up. Um, it's important that they stay up. Obviously, they they try and get a new owner to come in and look after the club. I loved my time when I was there. Three years, they've got a great stadium, great training facility. So um, yeah, it's important that they stay in in League One this year and um, hopefully get a, a new owner in and and kick on from there. It's always the fans as well that I think about. It's always the the fans that are that are, that are most uh, that are, feel like you know they're most affected by it because it's yeah. it's it's you know it's more than football sometimes, isn't it? So when you see situations like like Reading, well, it is. You know, it's um, fans are paying the, the hard earned money to go and support the team, and obviously it was mismanaged. There was lots of players that were getting brought in. Uh, I think it was Akia Jacobson. I think he was bringing a lot of players in for the owner. Don't think they're the right type of players, but they were on a hell of a lot of money. Obviously, are they going to go out and wear the short with pride and put the body on the line? It didn't look like, like it. So, um, best getting rid of them and, and trying to move the club forward. Yeah, yeah. Best, yeah. Very best wishes to them. Um, in terms of Ireland as well, yeah. uh, where are you on the new manager? Who would you like to see? Who do you think it'll be? I've said for the last year and a half, I would love to see someone like Lee Carsley. I think he's used to walking with a group of young lads with the England 21s. Ireland team has obviously gone through a, 
a period where it's it's not got your experienced players and they probably need a bit of guidance and I think someone like Lee I think he'd be the, the best man for the job I do um, but they're taking the time by the Ireland team so um, we'll just have to wait and see yeah what do you think and on the oh, Ireland it, manager it will be Neil Lennon oh it okay. will be, will be or oh, do you know that no I just, right. think, I just think it will be. Do you know why I really hope that happens? Because he's been on the podcast too. Right. And we can add him to our ever-growing list of things that happen. I mean, Lee's got the experience now, obviously working at an international level, albeit with, a, with the England uh, group and the 21s. Um, I don't know him. Um, but I think if you're looking for someone with that experience, I think it'd be, a, I think it'd be Lenny. I really do. Do you feel like you know something? Or Chris something? Coleman. Yeah, when when you said, I think you were pretty much guaranteed saying. Hmm. I'm well, looking at his eyes. When I remember Lenny being on here, and I told him who the next Tottenham manager would be. Yeah, I said it would be Ange Postecoglou. He said no chance. Okay. So I've already told Lenny that someone's getting a job. Now I'm telling him he's going to get one. Okay. I think it'd be him. That'd be really exciting because I think, Ian, we're up to, really excited for us because obviously I'm selfishly thinking about the podcast. I think we're on seven or eight people that have been on now and then got jobs at like 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 shortly after. Oh, right. Okay. So. not working for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you the agent? <laughs> we are. Uh, we do need to do a list at some point. Um, yeah. yeah we, we need to just, just firm that up. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I asked you there. Okay. Right, we always finish the podcast with quick fire questions. So for the two of you, it doesn't have to be quick. You know yeah, this. From, okay. You remember this from last yeah. time. Yeah, I don't know why we call it this. We could do with some suggestions on what to call this section. Um, who? Right, Tim. Who was the best player you ever played with? Easy, Alan Shearer. Oh, oh it's, I mean, it's, goes without saying, doesn't it? I mean, he's he's the reason why I've got a Premier League Championship winners medal. Yes, he has. He's the reason. I mean, seriously, he was just incredible. Uh, he's boring, but he's just you know, joking. I'm joking, Al. <laughs> um, who's the best player you ever played with? I'd probably say Rykin. Oh, okay. You can't argue with that. Yeah, you, I mean, you wouldn't, would you? I had so many battles with, with Roy. I mean, he was great. He loved it, loved it, loved every minute of it. We were competitive, and uh, I just think he's just no nonsense, proper player. And and not even when he's not playing well, he just makes others better, doesn't he? I mean, he just demands no, he's, it. Out he's of top, him. even even training, he demands it in training. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah, good, I good. I love him a bit. Yeah. Do you like him as a pundit? Oh, I think he's brilliant. You would never put him and Mika Richards, but I think the two of them complement one another. And um, I love when the two of them are on telly together. Yeah, it's, uh, but now nah, Roy, Roy is he's a, he's a top top guy. Yeah. I feel like you would like his punditry style because he just says. Yeah, I've worked him a few times. Yeah, no, he's good. No, he's good. I mean, he leaves nothing back, does he? I mean, yeah. he's not saying it for any reason other than he, that's what he believes. You know, we, that's, I, I just believe that punditry is quite easy if you say in what comes from your heart. Um, you know, he's not necessarily right. You don't have to be. Yeah, it's your opinion. Yeah, mm. I like. Yeah, I, I like you as a pundit. I like him as a pundit. I like people as a pundit that. It's um because you've said on here with respect, you've said on here before you don't want to get back into management. Mm. So when you're talking, it is what you think. It's you're not mm. like you know going around the edges because you're thinking you might get another job, you know, from somebody or anything. You're just speaking the truth, mm. and that feels like what he does as well. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. Oh, would you? Yeah, no, I wouldn't mind getting oh, back hold in. Oh, okay, put my cards down. I thought you said last time you didn't want to be manager again. No, no, I said I, I'd never say never, but um, no, it was always, always the doors always open. Depends how much I'm getting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to roll my sleeves up for a minute because we need to talk about this. So, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> so, yeah. So, in terms of level, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. It, 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 see, look, I've had a few inquiries recently abroad and stuff like that, but nothing I wanted to do. And there's never, ever been anything I wanted to do since I've left Aston Villa. So, Oh, um, what would it? What would tempt you then? Would it be a good? Would it be a good youth setup? Would it be like potential? Well, I love that. It... I love the development of younger players. That's what I loved. Really loved it at Tottenham. But it's no point doing it if you got a manager of the first team or a club's philosophy where they don't want to give the kids an opportunity, and then you're almost banging your head against the wall. Um, it was very difficult, but um, I like the development of younger players. Seeing 
what they could be, not what they are at the, at the moment. You set eyes on them, what they could develop into, uh, and then nurture them along the way. But in, in the end of the day, they need to have an opportunity to play. So you do need a, a manager who, who sees it from from your side, because, like I said earlier in the, the chat today, you know, at the training grounds, there's not a tree where world class players fall off it. Sometimes you have to nurture them, you know, and give them an opportunity. I mean, like we did, we had an opportunity to play through an academy system. I was at Watford. I went in. I was poor, and I was they stuck by me. I went in. There I was average, and then I got better. And that's what happens to most people. It's very few Lionel Messi's fall off the tree, you know, when they're geniuses from from word go. You need to be given the opportunity. Get you, someone who believes in you um, and I think I could fight for a lot of younger players to get them into Premier League football um, because I know what it takes to, to get there both from a develop, playing side coaching side and managing so I've got something to add um, just getting the opportunity to be able to do it and at the right at the right club we had Dean Holden on a few weeks ago who the week after he was on he took a job as Steven Gerrard's assistant in mm. Saudi Arabia would would could you be tempted to go as far as that? Do you think Saudi Arabia? Or? We'll carry our bags. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've, of course. I, 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 it's a challenge. I mean, Stephen's gone over there, and you know he's, he had a few jobs over here, and he, and he seems to be really enjoying it. So everyone's different. Sometimes it works for you, and sometimes it it, it doesn't. Um, no matter where where it is or it all depends what the job is and how good the club is and the, and the environment where you're in. So now, like I say, never say never, but I haven't closed the door to it. Um, but someone's got to employ someone who, who talks from the hip. Forgive me. I don't know why I thought you didn't, you'd said you didn't want to Maybe be a manager anymore. Yeah, well. Off well, camera. Yeah. Give, yeah, Tim, <laughs> give Tim a call. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Although I don't know if I want that, to be honest, because I like him just, he won't be allowed to come back on here, Ian. So, yeah, so he's positives <laughs> and negatives. Yeah, I've ruined the quick fire question section today. Well and truly ruined it. Okay. Um, oh, Ian, he's not here, so you can speak from the heart. Would you take Sam as island manager? I think Sam would be a good option but for me personally i would like lee carsley as force choice it's a very diplomatic answer wasn't it would you why why lee because he's from the republic well i've played with him yeah, i was in the island no. team with him obviously i think probably walking with the with the england 21s walking with a, a younger group of players yeah um i think he's got good experience as well i don't think ireland will go out there and get a big name Maybe a, a cheaper option. So um, out of them, better options. Yeah, I would prefer. Are Lee. your best players at the moment young ones? It, it's it's struggling really the squad at the moment. Is it? Where compared to the time when myself played and you had Robbie Keane, Damien Duff, Shea yeah. Given, you know, we moved to England at the age of what sixteen. Where Irish kids at the moment because of Brexit they have to wait until eighteen, so they're already two years behind yeah. playing catch up. And obviously, the levels now to try and get into a championship or a Premier League setup, it's it's more and more difficult because yeah. clubs are able to go out with the the kind of the pockets that they have, the the money they're able to go out and buy top top players. So um, yeah, I just think Lee would be that that guy having walk with youth. You've got Evan Ferguson, yeah. Obviously, um, do you think he could be a Gareth Bale type influential player for? For the Republic. Evan's a top, top player. He's a young player. There's obviously a lot of pressure on his shoulders at the moment because he's playing, obviously, top of the pitch. Um, to, to kind of label him being like Garrett Bale, Evan will be what he wants to be. Mm. Um, I think he's doing well at Brighton. I think he's got a, a great manager down there. But, yeah, it's a lot of pressure to put on a young lad. He just needs to keep doing what he's doing. Obviously, the Ireland team, it's not just one player. You need to, to play as a team. The players around them need to be better as well. Why did you say Gareth Bale? Um, because it was like he led Wales, didn't he? Like, to like carried the team. Yeah. Yeah, 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 to like the incredible mm. highs for them. Mm. Because mm. Evan's more of a sheer type player. Yeah. You know, he's probably the nearest thing I've seen growing up to, to, to him. Really? Yeah. 
I think he's because he's he played at such a young age, in League of Ireland at fifteen, you know, playing in the men's environment, and his dad was a player, wasn't Football, he? Yeah. So I mean, he's had a good pedigree, um, and playing games is like we talked about it earlier. It's the key uh, for any kid just to keep churning out n- numerous amount of games, um, and not not the tippy tappy under twenty ones football which I could play in now, and so could Hart. But the environment that he's at as well, Brighton, the, the football, the Fantastic. ball slid down the side yeah. for him to run on. Yeah. You know, Ireland don't have the players that are probably creative manager. to be able to slide them balls or create right. them chances for him. So, you know, you need you need a good manager that's going to bring the best out of the, them young players. And yeah. that's why I want Lee Carsley, whether I get it or not. Yeah. Are you Lee Carsley's agent? No, no. I just <laughs> I, I, I think he's a, he's a brilliant guy, obviously. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of time for him, and that's that's why I, I just think that's the direction I think Ireland should go in. But we yeah. shall see. Yeah, will he leave? Do you think under twenty ones to go? I, that, I have no idea, but no. I don't know. My suggestion would be maybe you I could do Lee that. On, Lee on this podcast because then you know, yeah, we have such good luck chance. We can we, we can ask the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we always have a question in from one of our listeners. Thank you so much. You can send them in on our Twitter or my Twitter or reply to the YouTube videos. Um, the new attacking focus of a fullback, do you think that would have played to your strengths? Well, I was I signed for Leeds as a striker and got moved. Did you? Yeah. Obviously, because of my blistering pace, um, got moved further and further back. So nowadays, you need to be able to get up and down the pitch. First and foremost, you have to be, have to be able to defend. Um but then, obviously, mm. the coaches want you kind of pushing on. And that's why I think the, the best left back in the Premier League at the moment is Undoggy at Tottenham. Mm. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a cracking young player. He's only going to get better and better. But that, that position is evolving all of the time. I mean, it used to be, it's changed now five years ago where it used to be up and down, getting a final third more than you come back. But now they're pushing inverted as well into midfield. They're almost being able to be the extra midfield player and yeah. I think he, he could handle the ball there's a lot of left backs back in the day you'd think woof wouldn't be able to do that um, but it's the good managers like I remember Fabian Delph when he when he left me at Aston Villa and he went to to Pep Guardiola I, I was thinking you're not going to play in midfield area all of a sudden he turned up there he played numerous games inverted as a midfield player because the managers saw that was where the strength lied with him and he asked, and I said to him, what's he saying to you when the winger gets the ball? He just said, do what you can. Just get back in, goal side, just do what you can. He don't expect you to do that. What he expects you to do is take the winger the other way yourself and, and occupy his mind on defending. So clever, clever management, but it's, it's moving all the time in the fullback yeah. areas. They're the players who t- getting the most touches in the game. You know, and they affect, you see the assists and that. Robin, Robertson, I mean, incredible energy up and down for Liverpool. And the assists and him and Trent on the other side. I mean, they even Connor Bradley now that's coming so through. Brilliant, amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right, the last question today. Obviously, um, you were known as a free kick specialist. So, if the ball's twenty five yards out in the centre of the pitch, you can choose any Premier League player, current player. James Ward Price. Mm. Oh, okay, straight in above Kevin De Bruyne. Yes. <gasps> Tim, I think you, I think you'd have to go with Ward Price. I think his his record st- speaks for itself. I mean, it's on free inc- kicks, incredible. yeah, incredible. And that that though, people think that just happens. He's not born with that talent. That's just hours and hours, and still does, of putting bag of balls down, putting them in different areas outside the penalty area, and delivering and practicing. You know, I always say, don't see a tennis player just turn up and hit cross court winners. It's because hours, hours of backhands and forehands. And that's exactly what James done. And it's exactly what Hardy would have done as a kid as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, the Brian, I love him to bits. But I think, you know, if it was me, I was going to have a bet on anyone. It would be certainly him. Mm. I think his technique, the way he was able to get the ball up and down yeah. over the wall. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of practice. And he's set up, Ian, he's like, he, he's not thinking about the environment. It could be anywhere. He's just thinking about the process. This is what I do. Every day takes yourself back. Yeah. It's like when we hit golf ball, you take yourself back to the range. And you know you can hit one down the yeah. middle, but you, you're looking at the bunkers and the trees, and, yeah. and you take take that out of your mind. Just it's simple. This is what I practice. This is what I'm going to do, and he does it better than anyone. I love that that came straight to both your heads as well, James yeah. Ward Browse. 
Thank you. Ian, thank you so much for coming and joining us again. Thank you. Cheers for having me again. It's lovely to chat to you as as always. Tim, thank you very much. Pleasure. Are you coming back next week? Yeah. Lovely. Why not? Unless I get that. um, Unless you get, oh no. Oh no, Ian. We've we've set him up now, haven't we? His phone's going to be ringing. (laughs) Darn it. Stay away, Chairman. I'm joking. I'm joking. I hope your phone rings. (laughs) Thank you all for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football, brought to you by William Hill.